Yeah, so this is basically the last revision session before your end term. Till what portion everything is covered? Can someone just give me a bit? Or you can directly ask anything, any questions which you are feeling difficult with any concept or anything. So I can I can start with that. Anyone has any specific question or specific concept you want to discuss? So, excuse me. So, in the last uh, session, yeah. we covered everything till week eight. Yeah. My expectation was that maybe this today we'll cover week nine, ten, the that. Uh -huh. that, that's fine. But uh, my point is, is everything till week eight is clear to everyone? Any concept you need to just brush up a little or discuss anything? So I think everything till we take is quite clear. Yeah, till projections we have done. Till? Uh, till what question you have done? Projections. <coughs> ah, so that is basically. Uh, uh, great. So we can directly start from revising uh, week nine. So in week nine, basically, we have seen uh, scale, uh, I mean, multivariate function. Right? And in the past few lectures, we have seen uh, limit and continuity of multivariate function, and then we'll go to reactional derivative and partial derivative. So, uh, okay. So, if I ask you that, uh, what is the difference between the limit of one variable calculus and the concept of limit in multivariate calculus? Is there any difference? Uh, so, in one variable, you have only a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. That's ah, right. Multivariable, you have all different lines and curves and where you can approach. Correct, correct. Uh, so, right. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, right. Uh, so, if we see the concept of limit as uh, already you have pointed out, in one level we have only two sides by which we can approach a particular point. Suppose this is my function, and I want to find want to find the limit of this at x equal to a. So. Now there are only two ways I can approach this point and accordingly how fx will be approached, where it will be approached, that is the point we are fighting for. Okay? So this is basically your limit of fx extending to it. Uh, now for uh, multivariable, we have drawn this picture earlier also. So suppose this is two variable we are considering. So along z we are plotting f x y. So suppose this is a surface like this and this is the point we are looking for. This is the point a comma b. Right? So this is the function from part 2 to r. So now there are infinitely many ways or uh, infinitely many paths by which I can approach a b. So that is why uh, in multivariable there are infinitely many ways uh, we can approach a point and then uh, the limit is basically if uh, by approaching through all the paths the uh, limiting point is same then only we can say that limit exists correct this is what we have discussed right anyone has any doubt in this anyone no sir no, no sir no sir Right. So suppose I am uh, giving a function like this. So this is one classical example we have seen earlier. Also. So this is the function. Okay. See if this x y not or e, and this is if x y is a 
Uh, I am asking you to find uh, whether limit exists uh, for this function at 0, 0. So what should our approach be? So we can use y is equal to mx. And right. then we can find the limit along that too. Okay. You can find so that is dependent on the slope. Dependent on the slope. Okay. So basically I am approaching. So here my point is the A B point is our zero comma zero. So so what yeah. I have understood is uh, when particularly in this course, okay. if the limit exists, then uh, it should actually be straight away f of a b. Uh, otherwise, we are essentially trying to prove that it doesn't exist. Not necessary, right? Okay. Uh, we have seen some example where we used uh, sandwich theorem to prove that limit exists. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are some such examples, right? Yeah. We have seen such. Uh, Maybe some questions are there already in activity question. Uh, sir, four x square y square something like that was there for limit. Ah, huh. right. oh, sir, this, this one, this one, this one. This one, right? This is one yeah, yeah, yeah. example. Ah, uh, like we have to disprove. Yeah. So I will come to that. I will come. I will do this. No, no. Disproving is the easy part, right? Disproving is the easy part, right? Proving is the hard sir, part. Another question. Sir, another question was there. I don't remember exactly. Like four x square y square divided by something was there. We could do it using the sandwich principle. Right, I, I right, think right. you, there are, there you are did it. Like that. Right, right, right. Uh, so before going to that portion, uh, let me complete this one first. Okay. So what? Uh, so somebody has already said uh, we are putting y equal to mx, and then what will be our fx y in this case? What will be our fx y in what? I am approaching uh, our point, our origin by this state line. Can I take any state line like y dot f? Divided by 1 plus m square. Huh, okay. So, but can we take this curve to approach our point? No, sir. Why? Because it is not passing through origin. Exactly. So whatever the point is given, you must remember the path you are choosing that should pass through that point. Otherwise, how can I approach that? So we cannot take any constant here. Otherwise, it will not pass through one. Okay. So this is one important thing you need to remember. Uh, so we basically substitute this. So x square will cancel out and I am getting this. Uh, then, then what is what is the argument here? I know you can prove it, but I just want to rephrase the concept. Any value of m your value. So limit is path dependent, actually. Limit is path dependent. Okay, path dependent. Is yeah, why is that? Because sir, for any value of m, we can get different values of for limit. Limit actually. So that's why limit is not unique. Basically, that's the bottom line. Exactly, correct, correct. So in this case, uh, whatever we are saying that uh, if I take y equal to two x, say the limit will be something uh, two by what, one plus four, two by five. Right? If I say y equal to three x, then it will be another some other other number, other factor. So limit is defined for every state line which we are considering. So limit does not exist. So for different path, uh, we are getting. Yeah, uh, here I just have a question, sir. Uh, right. I if we use this mx then it shows uh, uh, um, uh, based on the uh, value of m uh, the limits right. are different however right. we can use the sandwich principle for this and then say it is continuous right because x will be always uh, 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 zero less than x less than uh, uh, x squared yes. It, uh, it still won't satisfy actually because uh, on the left hand side you will get limit zero on the right hand side you would get one i guess yeah but uh, let, so him, let him try let him try yeah, square so, plus ah, okay, okay. Yeah. and then you divide it and then divide it it, it becomes uh, zero less than x by x square plus y square less than yeah. one okay. Ah, okay it becomes one ah, that is that is the issue ah. So we are not, uh, we cannot bound this function by two functions which are going to the same limit. Okay, okay. So that is that was the condition, right? 
So yeah. Excuse me. You you mentioned that the line has to pass through the origin. That is because we are looking for limit at the origin, right? Exactly, exactly. The but if I'm looking for a limit, yeah. So if I'm looking for a point which is not at origin, then we have to ensure that the line passes through that. Point. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. Exactly. That is why I was trying to say. So if it is origin, then whatever path you choose, you should remember that should pass through origin. If it is any other point, the thing is you have to choose a path such a way that it passes through that particular point. Otherwise, because we are approaching to that point, no, by the bar. So that is what it is required. Is it clear? Till this, this much is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Sir, could you solve one question like uh, um, the limit approaches some number other than origin? Ah, huh, but. Uh, yeah, but but at that point, here. yeah, at that point, the limit actually the limit does, does not actually look like. Huh. Can you can you give me a problem like that? Have you find any such problem? Some? No, sir. I'm, I'm not finding that problem because no. any problem is like based on our. Yeah. So there is a reason for that actually. So in one of my lectures, I have already mentioned that, but I forgot which one it is. So suppose you take uh, this one. something like this you are getting what i am doing here right so here if x y is not one common and here if x y is one so basically i can do the calculation and give you a complicated form here but i am writing in this form so you understand that if I put one comma two here, then it will be zero. That's why I am defining. Yes. Uh, yeah. Zero now if zero. I yeah now if I tell you to uh, check whether this limit exists or will it make any difference from the earlier problem? Sir, we may substitute x minus one as capital X and y minus exactly. Minus capital exactly. Minus so it is basically just shifting the point to origin right yes. so suppose i am giving you to find the limit like this i can shift my origin so basically i can do this my new capital x as x minus a and new capital y as y minus b now we are again coming back to this problem new function x y where x y is approaching to zero zero I can transform this limit to this. Correct? I can transform this limit to this one by doing this substitution. So that is why you generally don't see such problem where other than origin we are looking for limit for some other point. Because uh, whatever the point is, anyway I can do the shifting of origin, shifting of the our coordinate system and I can make it uh, to the origin, whatever point I have given, and then I can do the same same checking using the same path which is passing through origin. Is it clear what I am saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or else, what, another thing you can do, you can check directly for this function. You choose this path. So this is the path. This is the straight line which is passing through the point one comma two. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now do the same checking as you have done for y to f x. You will do the same substitution. Again, you will it will boils down to a square by one plus x square. So translate right. uh, from audible. Yeah, tell me. Uh, yes, sir. After translating this to origin zero comma zero, if huh. the new function's limit is exist. Then the original function limit is exist, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, sir. Because you're just transforming your function to the coordinate, defined coordinate system. And function is remaining the same, right? The yes. coordinate system is only changing. So it does it will not affect the limit at that point. So if okay. limit this limit does not exist, this limit, then this also should not exist, must not exist. Yes. Understood? 
Uh, yes. uh, sir, in this case, uh, the, if they are asking us to check uh, whether it is the function is continuous at origin, uh -huh. then how to uh, do? Because uh, now you are shifting it to one comma. Uh, at no, two. then they will ask to check the continuity at this point itself. One comma two only. One comma two. Because uh -huh. anyway, for uh, other point for origin in this case, if you want to see for origin, for origin you know what the function is, and that is continuous. Because at origin, what is the value of the function? What is f0 comma 0? What is f0 comma 0? 2 by 1 plus 1 plus 4. Right? That is 2 by 5. So this is at the origin. Right? Yeah. This is the value. And when you approach to the origin, this is the same function you are using. Right? So limit exists. This is kind of a rational type of function. And around origin, it is existing now. Because the only point where something different thing is coming that is around the point 1 comma 2 because there the function is uh, defined separately okay so we approach uh, this function uh, using any 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 curves uh, uh, like uh, y equal to mx or y square equal to m uh, x uh, yeah. in all the cases it will come to the same value to buy right. 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 Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but uh, there are infinitely many such cases, so you cannot check. So, you have to give some defined argument for that. Yes. Sir, also the shifting uh, uh, technique is applicable only if the function contains only this x minus k and y minus p terms, right? Other than that, if there are any terms, then like x, y. The technique always apply. I mean, whatever function I give, you can anyway shift this coordinate, right? Then, you have written x minus 1 into y minus 2. No, that doesn't necessary. If I just give you this function, right? shifting technique is a new way apply. Right? I can substitute x as x plus a and y as y plus b. So, shifting I can do it anyway. So, this is my new function fx. Okay. Right? This is just translating the coordinate system, nothing else. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? What was yes, actually? Sir. Yes, sir. So, if you are uh, comfortable with uh, checking limit at origin or whatever this type of problem, then whatever point is given, the checking is literally the same. So, we generally don't have to bother about that. Correct. And in some cases, for this type of function, say x cube plus x, so polynomial type of function. Okay. In this case, if I want you to find the limit at some point, any point, say 2 comma 3, you can find it, right? How, how do you can do this? So we can just substitute the, the value. Exactly. So yeah. we can just substitute the value because this is a polynomial type of function, right? This is a polynomial of yes. x and y. So whatever it is, it is always continuous. That we know. Is always continuous. because it can be we can find out how many derivatives we possible right all the partial derivative all these are there yeah. so this is anyway continuous everywhere right so for this type of function we can directly substitute the limit the point and that will be our limit right so for this case there is no we don't need to check whether limit exists or for this type of function. yeah so, sir, only when it is a piecewise function, we need to. Right. right. Generally, in those cases, so we need. Because there is a, there are two different type of function using uh, to define a particular function, right? Mm, so, yes. around or at origin, this is something else. Other than origin, it is something else. So, mm. there may be a chance for, uh, I mean, limit does not exist type of case. So, we can arrive at that conclusion. Right? That is why we are checking. So, okay. sir, that okay. means that for every uh, every type of these type of equations where there is piecewise function, even mm -hmm. though if it is a polynomial, let's say x square plus y square if x comma y is equal to zero comma zero, and two x plus three y if x comma y is not equal to zero, then right. also we will go through this method, or right. Right. Uh, we can directly go for polynomial one. No, then also for the that is particular point where mm -hmm. it is breaking. Mm -hmm. You will have to check whether it is okay. Got it. 
okay so this is what we have done uh, now the next thing is uh, so suppose uh, for a particular function this type of function when we are checking this so suppose we take this state line and we are getting same limit for all the state line does it guarantee that our limit exists no. no sir path it may be path dependent it may be path dependent right so suppose i am taking this one. So for this one, if I approach uh, origin by any state line, so y will be an x, any state. What will be our limit? Can someone tell me where the function will approach? M upon one plus zero, sir. Zero. So if I write this one, x squared plus m x. Huh. So x will cancel one. out. One. M by x, x plus into one. one plus m. Huh. One so is not dependent. No, it is basically it is going to be independent in this case, right? Because does not exist. X into x plus m. X. One plus if, if if we take y equal to m x square, then x will not exist. What what what? If we Sir, mx uh, by x into uh, x plus m. Yeah. Mx, but you must an x on the numerator. So the x gets cancelled. This will get cancelled. Right. This will get cancelled cancel out. M by x plus Then I am getting this, right? Ah, now yeah. it is one. It's, ah, then it is one, right? We need x tending to zero. This function. Oh, yes. So this is one. But so all the for any state line, our this function is approaching to one, right? When we are approaching towards origin. So does it mean that the limit of the function around origin is one? No, no, no. And it becomes half. So we have to check for other other terms. So let's say this one, the parabola, right? This is also passing through origin. So we can substitute this. So y equal to x square, this x square plus x square. This is our function. So it is 1 by 2. Oh, yeah. one. Now we can see that uh, limit is different, right? For state line it was 1, for parabola it was it is half. So limit does not exist, we can calculate. So for uh, limit does not exist, we have to depend on the path which we are choosing. Right? If, even if we check uh, say one lakh path one lakh or one crore path like this and we are getting the same limit that does not guarantee that limit will exist because there can be some other path for which limit so then what, what, what is the what is the best way to approach these problems this is the only way to approach this problem okay. so this uh, practice will give you that so when you see that there is a difference between the degree right of x and y that will give you a proof that which car you should take. Generally, we can get limits does not exist type of situation for this, or for this, or for this. We don't have to go beyond that, generally. Right? For some cases, we may have to use this one, the opposite one. But sir, uh, there was something uh, like numerator, degree of numerator and degree of denominator. Depending on that, we take some path, no sir? Yeah, that is what I am saying. So generally we get, so what degree you should choose that here y and x, that has difference of degree 1. So yes. this should be our choice, y equal to mx square. Yeah, there was something right. about so which the, means it should be more than the degree of the denominator, is it? Or it should no, be the so, same, sorry, same, same. So how do you choose that path? What is the reason to choose that path, that particular path? So if I choose y equal to m square, then I can cancel out x square. That is the okay, okay, okay. Right? Okay. Because fine. other things are depending on y a lot, right? So our goal right. is to cancel x square. Okay. In okay. the earlier case, if we see this one, right? 
So x and y both have degree one and one here, and below there are degree two point here, right? So yes. if I substitute y with x, what yes. power of x it should be? It should be one. Then only I can cancel out x square. Correct, correct. So okay. this is this is why I have chosen straight line. Okay, fine. So okay. that is the Thank idea you. of choosing. Okay. This okay. So the the whatever paths you have listed out here, y is equal to m x, y is equal to m x square. So uh, is, is it enough is, that we check only, yeah. only uh, only uh, putting these paths? Yeah. Generally, Suppose in all the paths the limits are the limits are same, then also we can't conclude that the limit uh, then is. Then. then in that case, what to do, sir? Sandwich. Then go to sandwich theorem. Then oh. it may give you an idea that okay, that limit. May exist for this case. Then let's see whether that is there. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. This is this is. Uh, uh, how about uh, the trigonometric functions? Uh, how to approach uh, trigonometric functions? Trigonometric function also this uh, sandwich theorem applies, right? So whenever I have some sine or cos function, right, that is bounded by minus one and one. Correct. Uh, there is some example with sine. Anyone remember where that is? In graded or activity, do you remember that? No, no one remember where it is. So there is some trigonometric function which uh, we can use and this theorem by that. This is. Not I'm just asking the general approach first. Straight away we have to like here, we are uh, trying to use the. Um, uh, uh various curves uh, linear or uh, quadratic right we will based on the given function right and then if that doesn't work we move to sandwich is right. there any approach for a uh, 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 similar approach or should we have any other approach to uh, or what uh, solve a trigonometric uh, now for trigonometry generally we use sandwich theorem for trigonometry function, generally we use Sandy's theorem for that. Activity 9.6, question number 6. Oh, sorry, 9. 9.6? Yes, sir. Question number 9. This should be a direction or derivative. This is direction or derivative. Uh, I can anyway ask this. So if I if I have this function, yeah, all of you can see this function in my screen. Question number eight. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Okay. Uh, so at origin, does limit exist? At origin, does limit exist? This is the question. So let me write down the question. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for pointing this question. So this is the function. So if it is not origin, and zero if it is origin. Now question is so the limit depends on that origin. If it is exist, then what is the limit? So yeah. So for this type of function, we know that sine function is always bounded, right? So whatever is inside the sine, that does not matter actually. This is always bounded by one and minus one. Yeah. 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 Is it clear to everyone? The sine function is always bounded by one and minus one. That we know. Now what is there? There is more the x square plus y square, right? We should multiply it. Now x square plus y square is always greater than zero, correct? Yes. Always yes, not negative. Yes. So if I mm. multiply this function with x square plus y square, our sign of inequality will not change. Right? right. So sign of inequality will be in the same direction. So in the middle, I am getting the function which is given in the question. Okay. 
with which I have to deal with. So this is the inequality I am getting. Correct? Yes. Anyone has any doubt in this? Yes, sir. No, sir. So I have one question here. So yeah, instead of x s plus y square, if it would be it, if it, it was uh, x square minus y square, huh. uh, then then some difficulty may have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we don't know whether the whole we thing is positive know, yeah. or not. Exactly. So sign may have changed, right? But there is also a way. I will show you why that is. Okay. Okay. I will come to that. That's a nice question. X square minus y square. So first understand this. Okay. So what is the limit of this one, the left hand side function at origin? Now, zero. 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 So this is ten, tending to zero, right? This is going to yes. zero. This is also going to zero. Yes. So by Sandwich theorem, where our function should go? Zero. zero. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, now, one one question. Sorry for interrupting yeah. between. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. that sign in between one one divided by under root x square plus y square. We are taking it to be lesser than one and greater than minus one just because uh, the sign one has the value in between. Like it can't be zero. It should be like it will always be positive. That's why it is. It is supposed. It to doesn't be matter. Whatever function is inside sign, the sign will eventually give it. Plus one or minus one. Upper limit and minus one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sign is always bounded by that. Okay. Sign function is always bounded by that. Yeah. So, sir, sir x the, square plus y square, uh, if we are taking the limit. This uh, one under uh, root x square plus y square, this is not going to infinity, right? Because uh, we are approaching to zero. We are not at zero. We are not at origin, right? So, this is some value which, is, which may be large enough. But still, when we apply sign on that particular large enough number, that will again come between 1 and minus 1. Right? Because sign function is continuous through minus infinity and plus infinity. And it is always in between 1 and minus 1. Right? Yes. Is it clear? Yeah, x square plus y square is always 0. Yes, yeah. Hello? Yeah, tell me. Why does this x square plus y square is 0 always? Hey, x square plus y square is not zero. Limit of this, limit of x square plus y square, when x y tending to zero, this is zero. Also, correct. Okay. This is clear, no? And we need that. So basically, uh, if you recall the sandwich theorem, we need our function to be bounded by two functions. If I am getting like this. Then uh, wherever this uh, these two limit are equal, these two limit are equal, then our limit of the function which we are considering, which is in the middle, that will give you. So suppose this is L, then limit of this function is also L. Right? This is the sandwich theorem. So we don't need gx and hxy to be zero. We need where they are approaching, right? What is the limit of that function around origin? And that is zero for both x square plus y square and minus of x square plus y square. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so sir, in general, if you want to prove that a function is continuous, then like checking paths is not the like, practical way to go about that. No, no. Ideally, you should find something like this where you can check. So, uh, it limit here we are talking about limits. Uh, sorry, I meant continuity. Yeah, yeah. Ah, but uh, continuity also, if limit does not exist, then also the function is not continuous. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that is also happen. Mm. You should then that basically uh, depends on the function which you are working. Okay, sir. So first check the what is the difference between degree of denominator and numerator if this is a rational type. Let's check that. Okay. Let's look some path and check whether limit are going to the same point or not. Then come to sentence two. Sir, how many questions will be coming from this later chapters? Mm. Is that a doubt from the concept? No, right? Uh, maybe two or three. Not more than that. Okay, sir. Uh, from, from this week, sir? 
I am not saying from this week. So from particular week, we are not giving any question. There may be a question which is covering week nine, week eight, week seven, maybe week ten. So question like this. So how can I say from week nine these many questions? That will be absurd. Sir, so three to four questions from entire vector algebra, right? Means vector calculus. Why? And that is not what I have said. I have said the question involving limit hmm. should okay. be three, four, or five, not more than that. Okay, but uh, there may be some question which uh, is from week ten, which does not involve limit, uh, which can involve vector space. Uh, three, that can happen, right? So better to not go with this type of calculation. That yeah, I can leave this limit section still. I can pass. That will not work. That I can say. What did you say? No, which leaving limits. Leave any particular concept. And go for exam and think that uh, okay, I can leave this concept because there will be only one question from this, so I can still manage. That will not happen because a particular concept can be involved in more than five, six question or seven, eight question. That can happen. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, is it clear what we are saying till now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Uh, yeah. For uh, partial derivatives, uh, also uh, if a function is given and they say ki whether uh, partial derivatives are continuous, will they ask such a question? Sir? Yeah. Uh, so in that case, <coughs> it is a piecewise function. We go by that limit uh, thing and then check the limits, exactly. is it? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Wherever there is some piecewise function, you should go by the definition. Okay. The limit definition. But if the function is continuous, uh, does it mean that the partial derivative will also be continuous? Not necessarily. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sir, did we cover uh, partial derivative and direct directional derivative already, or not yet, we are not just yet. starting with continuity? No, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Then just no, thank you. Then just derivative. Sir, so instead of x square plus y square, if uh, it was x square, x square minus, minus y square, solve that. Solve that. So, uh, can you try it now? I will. Uh, so, this is x square minus y square instead of x square plus y square. What is the difference is it making? So, now we don't know whether this thing is positive, whole no, thing but, is positive. Uh, we can get two cases for it. Uh, we don't need two cases, but I can break it like this. So, for x square minus y square, I can break this function like this. Ah, right. yeah, x square and then okay, and then now we can handle it for each function. Yeah, you can we can distribute it. the limit and then huh? for this two function, we can handle it correct. Yes. And both of yes. them are going to zero, uh -huh. right? At origin, so at origin, this function is zero, yeah, and this is at well, this is not origin, but this is going to zero. So, this function, if I consider only this. And with this one, so this is continuous. This first portion is continuous around origin, correct? Mm, yes. Second portion is also continuous around origin. Around. So limit can be distributed. Sir, but uh, in this case, x square minus y square over here will uh, become uh, infinity, no? Huh? The denominator of sign. No, why? I mean, that was this part. The, the sign uh, one upon uh, yeah, root yeah, uh, x square like plus that. y square. If that uh, is also uh, x square minus y square, in that case, sign what, uh, what that uh, one no, upon it won't, it won't the matter, right? Become, because no, that will become uh, negative. Uh, no. undefined. And it should become here also. It should become infinity, right? It will, it will be bounded ah. by bounded by. And then how how have we done this? If the denominator becomes uh, zero uh -huh. in sign, uh -huh. then in it should become case, infinity. That is, you are saying, right? Uh -huh. in so that for case, this case also, mean? for this case also, this, for this case also, it should be like it is, should be going to infinity. If that uh, under root also is x square minus y square, in that no, case even if it is x square plus y square, say that case also it should go to infinity, right? Actually, we are approaching to zero, not exactly. Um, let, let me talk with her. 
no what i was saying was if x x square plus y square in that under root Huh. becomes uh, x x square minus y square forget x then square that, minus y then square then that will, that will become zero no forget x square minus y square okay if this is x square plus y square first tell me that then also we are approaching to zero right huh, this is also origin. we are approaching to zero ha huh. then also it should go to infinity yes yes then why can we solve this one can you tell me that i have already said this that is why i am asking but then uh, uh, sign in any case will be between minus 1 and plus 1 right so similar logic for x square minus y square mm -hmm. okay so, okay so that doesn't matter that doesn't matter okay 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 yeah. because whatever large number you get here inside sign when we apply sign on that it should come in minus 1 and 1 that is the function sign Right, that is the sign function doing. Yeah. Sir, uh, so now x square minus y square, we are, uh, uh, you know, so we are breaking it. Breaking ah, it for x square plus y square also, we could have done that, no? Sir? Yeah, we could have done that, but we, we don't need to go much. via sandwich uh, theorem then. Ah, no, no. Then also we ah. are going via sandwich. Okay, okay, okay. Here also we are going via sandwich. Otherwise, okay, how can okay. you show that this is going to zero? But here I am breaking this in two parts. There, x square plus y square was greater than zero always, right? But here, in this case, this was not the case, right? Because we have x square minus y square. So what I have done, I have break it in two parts, two defined function, and I have checked that those two defined functions. So suppose this is my f one x y, this is g one x y, okay? or f two x y, f two x y. Now both of them are going to zero, right? So my new function, when I am writing it like this, this is what my functions are, and zero, right? This is that. Uh, sir, uh, why do we need to split it into two functions? Ah, because x square minus y square is not be positive, right? May not be positive always. Uh, yeah. So when I am writing multiplying with it. Mm. So in earlier cases, I have multiplied with x square plus y square, correct? Mm. Mm. And that is always positive. That's why this inequality did not change. Oh, ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. But now I cannot assure that. Yeah, correct. But if I choose only x square, this is positive. Mm. Then also inequality will hold, right? So I can check. So I will apply Sandus theorem separately on both of these functions, on f one x and f two x y, right? Yes, sir. Got it. Got my point. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So both of them are uh, continuous. Both of them are approaching to zero. So I can distribute the limit now over this. Right. Limit of the whole thing is basically limit of f one minus limit of f two, and both of them have limit zero. So what is the cumulative limit? That is zero. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, we, this is really good that we have solved this problem. Uh, uh, sir, uh, this um, exponential and uh, logarithmic function will also be asked uh, uh, how yeah, to approach we those. Don't ask exponential because exponential function, anyways, it's kind of a polynomial type of function. It is always complex. Generally, it is always complex. For log function, yeah, there it is, is a problem because it is uh, continuous, right? Exponential is also continuous. Right. Exponential logarithmic and. Uh, and for log function, and sometimes it can come in your calculation, but uh, generally we don't. Uh, in this case, in this for this particular course, we are not dealing with log function. Uh, just uh, one, one question: uh, like here, um, we mix this continuity uh, uh, principles along with the vector spaces also, because we see uh, so many a times the what, tangents what, and the what, vector what spaces are. are the, no, in the questions, uh, the tangents and the vector spaces are mixed and then uh, ah, the are questions are bundled with all these yeah. concepts, uh, yeah, yeah. testing all these concepts. Is. This it continuity is. also yeah, can be it mixed. Can be. It can be. It can be. I mean, all these concepts are related with each other, you can see. Right? If I Lots can... Interaction. Uh, huh? Lot of interaction of these concepts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these are related. 
all the concepts, whatever you have learned in math, so all concepts can be So there can be a question which is possible. Sir, how many questions will be there? Is that really, I mean, you don't have to bother about that. And uh, number of marks? So basically we create a question of 50 marks, which will be doubled down. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you will get a marks in 100 marks question, 100 marks paper, as you get anyway. No, and the comprehension type of uh, question which is there, yeah, how many marks that will carry? Maybe the... Because if uh, if it is 10 marks, then it will straight away go to 20 marks out of 100. Ah, ah, so, but that is part wise question, no? Are you planning to ignore No, the no, because uh, uh, la in the last quiz, I had a problem. I made a mistake in the first part and then all my questions went wrong. That is why I'm asking this question. In the comprehension type, I made a mistake in the first part of solving and then uh, all and others to, to the worst thing is uh, you you try to make a number wrongly uh, taking uh -huh. the... that what? is exactly what happened <laughs> in my case uh, this is uh, we don't have uh, we, we have only uh, maybe maybe uh, this can be a discussion maybe taken for uh, for uh, further improvement hmm. because in math it should not be, uh, the, the, the steps okay. may be followed by People, however, uh, they, they... No, the other day, Mr. Bishwajit said that uh, you have to be very careful when you are answering the comprehensive type of question because uh, if you make a mistake in the first part, it will get reflected in the uh, uh, consequence, uh, the subsequent See, one questions. Thing, also. One thing I can say that uh, the number of questions, how many questions we are giving... Sir, it's slightly louder if you can. So my point is how many questions we are giving, the number of questions we are mm. giving, that can be easily solved within the time limit which is given. Mm. Right? And you can take uh, your proper time to think and do the, there are very little calculation I will say in quiz one and quiz two. Uh, that will be same for end term also. Right? Quiz two was and, more conceptual I think. Yeah, every time we want to make a question like that which is more conceptual, right? We don't bother about calculation. And now, if you do a mistake of simple calculation by mm. adding some number or dividing with some the silly mistakes, which we mm. say, if you do it that, then that will affect your result. Yes, that affects the... Right. So, that so, cannot do anything about Yeah, it. yeah. I can say you frankly. Yes, because even if uh, your concepts are clear, uh, uh, you right. can uh, make... Right. Uh, so, I will say, do it slowly, but... Do it properly because mm -hmm. if you have the concept here, then you can solve the problem. That is mm -hmm. the first thing, right? And if you want me to remove the comprehensive type of question from the paper, which we can do anyway. No, but, no, uh, it is okay. Not, no, I was just asking because, all this because I had that problem last time. That is why I asked. Right, right. Many students have uh, said that, not only mm -hmm. you. So, my so the, 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 the no, problem no. is, uh, it is the... The comprehensive type questions are good, no problem about that. I could solve the questions, but because I made a mistake, numerical mistake in the first part, it got reflected in others. That no, is this is a revision part. session or problem solving session? Ah, so it's a revision session, yeah. right? So let's just... So let's discuss the revision. Huh? Yeah, let, let's revise yeah, because, because, because if the concepts are clear, no matter the question yeah. will be able to help us to build concepts and address the upcoming uh, paper. No? Sorry. Yeah, tell me, why, tell me any, any, other, any other issue. Till now, what we have discussed, is it clear to everyone? Yes. Any yes. doubt in this? I do not like it. Okay, great. Uh, so, yeah, fine. Manish, you have any doubt in this? Whatever we have discussed in now? No, I had, sir, but there's no point in wasting others' time, sir. Because I couldn't understand the limit being zero. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no I am no, asking you that whether you have any, any, is this, until this part, is this clear? No, no, that's what I'm saying. It's not clear to me, but since we have already wasted our time, I don't want to waste others' time now asking this silly question. No, you, you ask me. I have, I have not done the lectures still, sir. So I don't want you to, if it is not to beg. Oh, okay. Okay, fine. Uh, 
so till continuity we are uh, we have said anyone has any doubt till continuity otherwise we will move to partial dimension partial derivation anyone has no, any so, doubt so what what we checked so far is that the limits right so are we saying if the limits ah, exist so then it is continuous you tell me what is the definition of continuity of a function well in two dimension it was uh, in a single variable it was both limits exist and exactly. the value is equal to the value of the at that point yeah, same 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 definition yes. okay yeah. so this limit should exist whatever the limit i am considering this should exist and this limit should be same as the value at that point okay okay so i so it's the same definition no different same definition. thank you because that is what continuity is uh, there is no gap at that point. There is no jump. There is no gap. There is no disparity at that point. That is what it is. Okay. So, is it clear? So, this is what it is. Yes. Okay. So, you understand when we should apply Sandy's theorem, when we should uh, check through the path and all this, how we are dealing with, how we are dealing with a trigonometry type of function. That is what we have discussed. Okay. Uh, I have one so line. if you can give the bottom line, like summarize the thing which you have told. Is something yeah. we study like a, you know, yes, sir. By point wise, so that we can revise. Like the last point, last line which you told. Uh, like when we are using the trigonometric function, we can use the sandwich thing, and when we are dealing with the normal normal uh, equation uh, functions, so we, path, can, path we can we can go shape. with the path thing. Yeah. Exactly. Step by uh, step by we can put it down there. Is, uh, so let me tell you, this is not a thumb rule, right? This is not no algorithm which I am writing. For some problem, it may be different, completely different. First, check with paths. Generally, it gives you when limit does not exist. And what type of path we generally use? This is. This type of path we generally use, or maybe the opposite one. This one. Okay. Generally, this type of path will give you what you need. Okay. Now, to how we will choose this path? It generally depends. Suppose I have this type of function. So, numerator and denominator are there. Check the difference between check the difference of degrees. Check the difference of degrees okay. of x or y. That will give you an idea which path you should take. Then you should go to sandwich. Uh, so this is basically inequality. You have to know some inequalities. What type of inequality we generally use? One inequality is basically this one. Then, so then sine, sine, okay, whatever there is in between sine, this is less than one. This type of inequality generally works. Okay. Is it here, more or less, what we are saying? Yes. So it can be squared because. Just yes. <coughs> so this is generally the inequality we use. and. Uh, by using this inequality, we can do Sandwich theorem. This generally gives the limit of the function. And sir, one more thing: if it is cos, then will it will it be between zero and minus one and no, zero? No, for cos also it is minus one. Right? Minus one. Oh. For cos also it is the same. Oh. Okay. Tan we cannot say anything. Yeah. Generally, tan. Zero to infinity. Uh, yes. So I have a question. Yeah. Um, since tan, uh, trigonometric functions are continuous, is it necessary to check through sandwich theorem or is it correct to uh, just assume that it will always be continuous and the limit exists? How you can assume that? No, but tan is not why continuous. have you checked check like this for this type of function? Yeah, I mean, I do that, but um, trigonometric yeah, so functions are... If it is only trigonometric function, then I mean... 
this is not continuous. Suppose I have this function alone, say fx y, just sign of this. This function is not continuous at origin, right? Because the, the value will shoot up. Okay. You don't know what this does not exist at origin. That is the one. Okay, okay. Thank you. Fine. So it's better to go with uh, proper proof, right? Don't assume that this is not For polynomial function, we generally can assume. So let me write that also. For polynomial function, it is okay. Polynomial or exponential function. Exponential function with the exponent as point of view. That is what I am saying. With exponent as point of view. That means uh, I am talking about this type of function. Or you x, y. These are all the functions. Correct? Yeah. Is it here? But, so this is what uh, limit portion is. And when. Sorry, if limit, I if, uh, I your voice is breaking, I cannot hear it. Sir, hello. Yeah. Sir, uh, no, if uh, you said sign of 1 by x square plus y square, then how do we check that, sir? What? And your voice is breaking, I, don't know, I cannot hear properly. Okay. So I have said the sign, sign, sign of. Uh, sign of Ah, so, is this, uh, I mean, for this, the does limit exist, sine 1 by x? Just extending to 0, is this, it becomes this does not exist? Sign in, yeah. Ah, so, this limit does not exist, this will, uh, this we cannot conclude, right? Because okay. this function does not exist at all. Okay, okay. So, similarly for okay. Okay. multivariable also, the same thing. Okay, okay. Uh, fine. Okay. Uh, so, this Thank is, you. this is done and uh, if limit exist this limit exist and this is same value so first of all this has to exist and this is giving the function same function value then f is continuous otherwise it is not okay so this is the this is what we have seen now what about pa partial derivative anyone tell me can you tell me what this is? It's a directional derivative along one of the axes. Okay. So let me start with directional derivative first. Then I will come back to partial derivative. So what is directional derivative? So uh, in one variable, what we have done in one variable, at some particular point, if we want to find the derivative of the function, we draw a tangent. And the slope of the tangent is basically your derivative. Yeah? Now, what will happen? Now we have a multivariate function. So, uh, surface is there. Now, at this, there are many tangents at a particular point. Right? So, slope of the tangent will also change. And how the tangent will basically, on which the tangent is basically depend? It depends on the direction which we are taking. Right? On the direction which we are talking about. On that, the direction of the tangent will fix. So, at different direction, we will get different tangent. Right? So, our directional derivative will change. That is why the concept of directional derivative is coming in multi variable, not in one variable. Is it clear? Yes. yes Come again, sir. Ha. So, basically, for different direction, the direction of the tangent at a particular point will change now. Correct? For different, different directional vector. So, for different directional vector, the tangent will change. So, the slope of the tangent will also change or may right. change. That is why right. differential uh, directional derivative concept is coming here uh, in multi variable, not in one variable. Because one variable, we have a fixed tangent at a particular point. There are no right. other directions. Correct? So, this is why. Now, when we are talking about direction, basically we are talking about a particular vector. Generally, we take a unit vector along that direction and uh, we do calculate this one. 
at a particular point. So what is this? How it is defined? So this is basically limit h tending to zero. A plus a g one, a plus a g two, minus f of a b, right? H. Okay. This is what uh, we have done. Now, why this is happening? Again, if you remember the one variable thing, what we have done for one variable. So this is h. This is a plus h. We have calculated the inclination at this. So this is a plus h minus f of a by h. So this is h, and we have calculated this limit when h is approaching zero. We are getting the inclination, right? We are getting the tangent. So here also the same thing is happening, but along a particular direction. So let's see how it will look like. So this is your AB. This is your you, you, you is a unit vector, right? So you have to always use unit vector, yeah, along some direction. Okay. Suppose I am taking this unit vector. Yeah, this direction. So we take E1, E2 here. So we are getting some inclination along this line. Right? So how how this is happening? So this is a plus h u minus sorry comma b plus h u two. This is what we are doing. So this is h the inclination a b, and this is the change in the value of the function, and we are dividing with, with h. So this is the same type of thing we are doing, but in a particular direction of u one, and then we are calculating the what is the change of the inclination of the function, right? And that is your direction derivative. Is it clear? More or less the idea, the geometry is clear to everyone. And point so A, B, you go, and the origin. A, B is the point on which we are calculating the derivative. Okay. In one variable, we are calculating the derivative at a particular point A, right? Here we are doing it for the point A comma B. Uh, so what, Sir, so one, sometimes there are questions where the uh, where directional vector is not given. Uh, but what is said is that question has saying that the plane is parallel to something or uh, so you the direction is hidden in that right yeah so can you take an example of how to extract the i mean a unit vector given a plane or something tell me one 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 problem i have uh, seen that was one uh, so let me just pull it up I Right now, but. but I think it is already been discussed in some of the live session already. Because uh, in division session, if I have to go back to plane, all the problem like this, then the line activity. Ah, huh? tangent line. Yes. Ah, then I will I will go to that. Sir, also okay. in your earlier live sessions, you explained uh, about differentiability, right? The Sir, uh, that, that can was also more or less similar. I am getting confused between uh, both of these. No, they are uh, the concept of derivative is little bit different from this. This is yeah, just change when of the I look at it, Yeah, when I look at it from the formula perspective, there is one just one more extra term. That's it. So. Yes, but uh, so that will involve the slope of the function itself. But here we are talking about the slope of the tangent at a particular direction. Right? And that does that does not depend on any 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 direction per se. That is derivative at a particular point, whether the total derivative exists or not. Right? Those two are different. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, I have one doubt. Yeah. Sir, can you explain, sir, uh, nine point three question number three? Sir, what sir, is there any relationship between continuous and uh, partial derivatives? Any nine point three question third. Any relation in in what sense? Sir, any relationship between the continuous and the partial derivatives at a particular point? Uh, at a particular point. Yes. Really. Not really. What type of relation are you asking for? Sir, for sir. example, uh, if a function is not continuous at a point, then I assume at least uh, maybe uh, there is some 
uh, derivatives, uh, there is some directional derivatives is not exist at the point. Or if the function is continuous at the point, then all the derivatives are exist at the point. So that type of relation. Oh, actually not. Cannot say it directly from here. We cannot say it directly from there. One thing I can say that if all the partial derivatives exist and they are continuous, the tangent at the particular point will exist. Okay. That we can say. That there is a relation like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. Which so one? nine point three third. Third problem. This one. Yeah. The direction vector is given. Sir, as an example. I am not able to solve it. But here yeah, the direction of vector is given, right? Yes, yes, direction of vector is already. Huh. So you have to Sir, I am doing some through. mistake, but I am not getting the answer, but all others I am able to find the answer. Okay, first that's why I'm asking. First transfer it to a unit vector. Yes, yes, I already did. Okay, yes, sir. Then, then. So first of all, now you are in. Uh, you have covered all the weeks, right? So without going through the definition, can we do it in any other way? Let me ask you that. Is there any other easier method or direct formula? Can I apply to this to find the direction derivative? Yes, sir. Gradient into the gradient into unit vector. Exactly. Exactly. If I can find gradient at that point and I can, and why I can do that? Because this is a continuous function, right? Yes. Function oh. is continuous everywhere. It's a polynomial type and exponential type of function, right? So it will be, all the partial derivative will be continuous because if you calculate the partial derivative, all those will be continuous. So we can apply that formula, the gradient formula. What is that? The directional derivative at a particular point. This is, so this is maybe A, B, C. So that was three variable. So gradient of that function at a particular point dot u. Correct? We have seen this formula. And when we can apply that? So this can only be applied when all the partial derivatives are continuous. Yes. Correct? So here your function is given like what? X power y, y power z. So you can calculate x by z. Come on, Paul. Right? You can calculate this one. Put the points and calculate the unit vector. Do it. Do the dot product. You will get your answer. Is it okay? So this is the process. Now you check your calculation. I will not take that. Is the process clear at least? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Fine. Yeah. So, this is what uh, one thing is. Now, uh, let's go back to the direction derivative once. Uh, uh, sir, uh, here uh, you are doing a dot product, right? Sometimes uh, what we do is if we given the point, uh, we given a point uh, A, comma B, we just say A, A, comma B, comma F of A, comma B. Uh, plus uh, t times uh, you, you we convert any vector to a unit vector and then uh, make uh, u1 comma u2 comma f u uh, means the, the differentiation of f u at a comma p this also we do uh, some in calculating what is the derivative are you saying something to calculate Direction derivative or something else? Am I audible? Sorry, the tangent, the tangent. Yeah, that is different, that is tangent. So that is parameter. P is your parameter in that case, right? So probably you are you are talking about this one. So I think you are talking about this this right? This parametric equation. Yes. Ah, so this is different, no? This is a parameter. This is t into that uh, vector, a p u a b. So this is now a scalar quantity in your place. 
right this is not a vector sir i have one doubt here so i am get mm-hmm. one of the equations like y of t equal to 1 plus 0t uh, i'm sorry <coughs> okay yeah so i convert into this symmetric equations so how it will be look like y minus 1 by 0 No, you don't convert it to one. You don't convert it to why you get t as zero. Yeah, t times zero. I will get uh, t times zero. zero, right? So y minus b by zero. Yeah, that is your symmetry equation. But okay, it's a valid one. Yeah, in this case, it is valid because these are not. Uh, we are not dividing this. Actually, okay. Per se. Okay. Sir. Right? This yeah. is the equation of the straight line in three dimension. So okay. the deviation cosine of the straight line is basically the So okay. some value is coming. So that is giving you. Oh, okay. so sorry, uh, sorry, sir. I got confused. This this one directional derivative is just a number. It gives right, the directional uh, derivative is a scalar. Right? It yeah, it is. It gives the slope at that point uh, on the given exactly. direction. Exactly. Exactly. However, the tangent is the actual equation of the uh, line itself. This all together is forming the equation of the tangent. Yeah, equation of the tangent on the on that line or uh, in that direction. This is an equation, and the direction derivative is the slope only. Exactly. Oh, thank you. In that particular direction. In that particular direction. In that particular direction. Yeah. So I have I have given a demonstration uh, using GeoGebra. Anyone has that link? Can you post that? Or else I have to find. Shyam, do you have that? Ah uh, yes, sir. Can you can you post there in chat? Otherwise, I have to find where this. Is. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Post it, sir. Yeah, yeah. So this one have all of you seen earlier? This is very nice uh, representation of the channel derivative. So this is the function x square plus y square by two. This is the surface of the function. The surface of the function. Now uh, let's first consider the point one comma one. So here you are seeing the point one comma one. Right? Now what is the meaning of directional derivative for some vector? Suppose I am taking this vector zero point seven point seven one and comma zero point seven. That is forty five degree with x axis. The vector which is making forty five degree with x axis. Right. So what I can do in this direction if I join the point. With the vector, I will get a plane like this, which will cut our surface, right? And then on the surface, on that plane, I can draw a tangent like this, which pass through the given point one comma one, right? Directional derivative will be the slope of that. Now, if I change the vector, you can see the plane will move, right? So the tangent will also move, but I am fixing my point. My point is not moving, but tangent will move because we are changing the direction. Right, so our directional derivative will change. That is what directional derivative does. Now, if I fix the vector per se, then I can move the point. So I am only changing x coordinate. I move the point. Then also you can see the tangent plane is shifting parallel because our direction is same. I am just moving our point, and then also the tangent will shift, and our partial derivative will change. Is it clear to everyone? Because now the tangent, uh, tangent, this plane which is cutting our surface that is moving parallelly on our surface. Because our direction, vector direction is fixed. If we change y, this will look like this. This will move front or back. So if we are changing the point, the directional derivative is not changing because the slope is not changing, right? No, no, it will change. No? Like we are shifting the point only. Ha huh, then also the direction of the tangent will change because the tangent is moving okay slope right that is what i am saying can you see the tangent is moving so the slope is also changing right so you see where the tangent is cutting the plane then you can get this angle is basically changing if i move along x axis see angle is changing angle is reducing see yes sir so now now i can see And if I change the vector, then obviously the plane will move. So obviously the tangent. Yeah. 
So this is the representation of direction derivative. I have shown in many. And uh, this, uh, so 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 this translucent yellow color thing, um, the plane which is intersecting the the whole function. That is what we are taking, like, as a reference. This is not tangent plane. This is not tangent plane. No, no, this is not a tangent plane. This uh -huh. is what we have taken. We are taking into consideration when we are con considering that uh, vector u over there. You need exactly, vector. exactly, exactly. Right. Oh. That plane is basically a plane which is passing through uh, the point we are uh, at which we are calculating the direction derivative, and uh, the unit the vector. vector. The unit vector. If we join these two. Right, we will get a line, right? And mm -hmm. on that line, if we draw a plane which is not our circle, that is the plane. Okay. So, and this is and we always convert it to a unit vector, the, the given uh, direction into a unit vector, just because uh, it should, uh, uh, since we are making a dot product, it does not uh, impact the uh, exactly value. because eventually we should get a scalar, right? Otherwise, we get a multiple of that. Yeah, multiple of that. Multiple of that. If we directly, uh, yeah, if we directly multiply it, it, it has this. Uh, uh, also, because we are looking at the, we are looking at the direction and not the magnitude. Exactly. exactly. So this is what direction derivative is, right? I hope this representation will clear many of your doubts. So let me go back yes, to one, one. Yeah, move right. Ah, now. Uh, if I just take it like this, uh, should I just... ah. so what is this one when the angle is 90 degree? Uh, vector is making a 90 degree angle with x axis. What is that? This is basically direction of y axis, right? So now, if you can see that our plane is basically parallel to so y-z plane. So this is basically the partial derivative along y-axis. Now what I am getting is nothing but partial derivative along y-axis. Correct? Because our plane is parallel to y-z plane. Yeah? Our plane is parallel to, so our vector is parallel to y-axis. So this is how our plane will look like. It will be exactly parallel to y z correct so our vector is 0 comma 1 this is the unit vector along y axis that we have seen earlier yeah now if i go to this 0 now our plane is parallel to x z so our vector is parallel to x axis so plane is parallel to x z now this is how our directional derivative will look like this is how the tangent will look like is it clear Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 So this is what we are doing. Okay. Any doubt in directional derivative, partial derivative? Any doubt in this? No. Okay. So this is what uh, we have done now. What yes, sir, sir, can you yeah. share this document? Oh, it's good for revision. Key the points. One? Key points. This one, this one is already with you. This is week eleven solved with us assignment. Okay. You are not seeing your portal properly, and then you are asking. There is nothing like this. This is <laughs> exactly solved with us assignment. Yeah, I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, that is why it was created so that before the exam you can just browse through it and everything you got a picture of. Yes, sir. Okay. These solve with us assignments and the reflect with us. Is that those are very helpful actually. Yes, sir. There are many many. Things. If anyone read it, want to read it in detail, there is a book also for this. Okay. So what is the next thing? Next thing is gradient descent, right? So gradient descent means what? Uh, so uh, when we are calculating the directional derivative, along which direction the directional derivative is maximum? That is what our question is. Right? Along which direction our uh, directional derivative will be maximum? That is what gradient descent is. Right? 
so if i if i write this one so a b or a b what is it grad of this a b dot u now what is dot product so if i break it down norm of gradient norm of unit vector into cos theta right so this is the dot product this is we have seen in week 7 last lecture right now what is the so norm of u is 1 this is 1 so we generally get now when what is the maximum value of cos theta and what is the minimum value of cos theta maximum value 1 1 and maximum value is 1 right I mean, minus 1 minus 1 is the minimum value minus 1 minimum and one is maximum correct exactly so when maximum value x of x is 1 then this is maximum right because this is positive just so when it is 1 this will be maximum what is the maximum value that is norm of gradient that means theta will be zero right i'll i'll come that let me write this minimum and then i so it is minimum then the minimum value is minus of norm of this now when theta is maximum that is uh, sorry when cos theta is maximum that is 1 then what is the value of theta when cos theta is maximum at which theta 0 this is 0 right 0 or pi uh, so uh, so 0 so 0 means what Uh, so in the same direction of gradient vector so what is theta here so when i am taking two vector u and v let's say a and b cos theta so this theta is basically the angle between a and b correct that is how uh, dot product was defined now when theta is maximum when cos theta is 1 cos theta is maximum the theta is basically zero in this case 0 degree or 2 pi whatever you want to say and for that uh, what does it mean so it is in the same direction of gradient vector the angle between u and gradient vector is same so when this happens so the direction derivative will be maximum when u is in the direction of gradient vector these two are in the same direction and when it is minimum this is in the opposite direction because theta is 180 degree right 5 is five. then it is minus 1 so it is in the opposite direction of the gradient is it clear is it clear yes sir yes sir uh okay so it is fine uh, then the next thing was tangent uh, tangent vector so and then tangent plane uh, is there any other application other than uh, this maximum and minimum uh, percent do we have any anything uh, in between any other application where we, we need to find in between uh, direction derivative application yeah. of direction derivative are you no uh, the um, the maximum ascent and uh, descent the gradient descent is basically the algorithm for finding maximum minimum yes okay. but but we we discussed about uh, uh, zero degree and then exactly opposite degree means uh -huh. opposite direction both same direction right. and opposite direction do right. we have any other application where uh, uh, we we have to find uh, any other uh, points between these two no 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 so gradient descent basically does where it is maximum where it is minimum nothing else you can only talk about that right. so i have given one example in my live session so if you are climbing a hill if you remember if you are climbing a hill you cannot see the whole picture of the hill because there are mists mists all in front of you there are fogs in front of you now you can see it locally right this is what gradient descent is doing you can see locally what is around your point a b so you can choose all the vectors around your point ab 
but you see where the gradient vector is that direction will be maximum and where the gradient vector and the opposite of gradient vector that slope is minimum so you take that so by doing this you can get a path from top to the bottom that is what gradient descent does in the whole thing thank you is it clear so this is what okay uh, so next thing was uh, tangent tangent line and tangent So first of all, why these two are coming all together? Because in one variable there was only one tangent, right? No concept of tangent plane. Again, the concept is similar because there was only one direction in that case. Now we are different direction. So if I consider a point on a particular surface, there are many tangent at that particular point. Now, unless we fix a vector, we don't know which tangent are we talking about, right? So basically, just now what we have done. We need to calculate the reaction derivative at that point, right? Because that will give you the particular tangent at that position, as, as the demonstration was showing. Right? If I want to find this tangent, if I want to find this particular tangent, right? So we need to find the reaction derivative at that point, and exactly tangent calculating tangent line is doing the same thing. So there are uh, few ways we can do it. So there are multiple form of the equation in which we can write. Basically, all of them are going to the same point eventually. So first one is parametric equation, right? So parametric equation, basically, uh, we consider a parameter and along that parameter, we are writing the equation of the straight line. So tangent line is a straight line in three dimensional space, right? So we cannot uh, give it directly we using only one equation. At least two equation is needed, right? Uh, do you getting what I am saying? Sir, because I am not getting it. Sir, one thing I want to ask, like the gradient. I know okay. the numerical part of how to calculate it, but yeah. what is the geometric, uh, or when we see the figure, can you can, can explain it on that? Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Rithik, is it you? Yeah. So I know how to solve for it, but, but what is it? Is this your first live session? Today? No, uh, like I've attended, but it's difficult to remember everything. So just the gradient. So basically, uh, yeah, basically gradient vector will be the perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, okay. Yeah. That is what gradient vector does. Uh, I will show you eventually. Okay? So once I show the equation of the tangent line, then you can get a feel for that. So uh, what I was saying that if I want to represent a line in three-dimensional space, if I just write it like this, like this, this will give me a plane, right? This will not give yes, me a line. Sir. This will give me a plane. Yes, if I write sir. another one, and suppose they are intersecting at some places. If I write these two together, then only I can give you a equation of a line, right? So I need yes, two equation sir. to represent a line, at least two constraints. So we are in R3. This is in R3 as a vector space, if you are saying, right? What is the dimension of a line? If I consider the line as an affine line or affine subspace, what is the dimension of a line? Two. Two. One. Two. One. 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 Yes. Yeah, this is week four, week three. Yeah, I guess uh, two, sir, because that is what ah, two we... constant. That is that is what I am saying. Yeah. So yeah. So for that, when I am talking about tangent line, we need this many equation, at least two equation, which are uh, two yes. constant for me. we need to define a tangent line. So that's why the first thing is parametric condition. Before going to parametric condition, I will I want you to focus on symmetric equation. Okay. What the symmetric equation does? 
So take first two part. That will be your one constant, and take a second two part. That will be your third, uh, second constant. Uh, sir, and sorry to disturb you. Can can you just uh, zoom it a little bit? Zoom a little bit. Is it clear now? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. If you see x minus a by u1, x minus y minus b by u, suppose we are focusing only this part. So this is one equation, right, which involves x and y, the first two variables. This is your one equation. The second equation, let's consider this one, y and z, right? This is your second equation. So these two will give you two plane, and the intersection of this plane is basically when all those x y will satisfy all these all these two equations together. That's why the equality, whole equality is come. So all those points which satisfy both the equation, that will be lying on our tangent plane. Is it clear what I am saying? Sir, you said about considering two equations like x minus a by u1 and y minus b by u2. So there is an equality sign. So why will we consider two equations? Okay, let me let me explain again. This is, this is the tangent line equation. Now my point okay. is there are two planes which are intersecting at the tangent line. What are those two planes? First plane is basically this plane. This is one plane, correct? If I only consider this, because this is the equation involving only x and y. Right? This will be a plane in R3. How it will look like? So you consider this equals A, one, y, so U2x minus U1y and some constant. So this is the equation of a plane in R3, correct? Where coefficient of z is 0. Is it clear? Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. If I consider, if I consider yes, the second, second part, this part of the equation, this part. Again, I will get an equation of a plane involving y and z where coefficient of x is 0. Correct? Yes. So I am getting two planes. And when I am writing this equality all together, what I am basically considering? I am considering all those x, y, z which will satisfy these two planes. Yes, sir. And this yes, sir. Yeah. That's why this equality we are saying. Mm. So this will be a straight line, and that is our tangent line. And what is the slope? Slope is so along x-axis. You know because along it's not along x-axis. So our vector was u1, u2. So along the x direction, this is the direction of this. Along the y direction, this is the direction. And for a function, what is the direction? What is the change of that? That is the directional derivative. That's why we have calculated. So, so, so the tangent line, tangent line is the that one uh, in uh, the where these two plane will, will intersect each other, right? Exactly, exactly. So, I am explaining why our equation will look like this. That okay. is why I am explaining. Okay, to give you an idea that why suddenly the equation of tangent line will look like this. Anyway, you can remember the formula and do it. But at least you should get an idea of why it is coming. So, this is what what it is happening. So this is x minus a by u1 and y minus b by u2. This is basically a plane we, we are considering at the point a comma b in the direction of u1 and u2. Right? And this is the functional end of it. And each, each, of, each of this is uh, equated to a parameter. Ah, so this is the symmetric form. Is this clear at yeah. least? Till now? This is the symmetric form. Yes. Now, if I equate it to a parameter, so all these are equal, so I take a parameter t. So you remember when we consider, say, null space of something, right? We get some equation, and then I say that let z equal to t. That t was a parameter, and x, y is supposed dependent on that, right? We calculated null space like that. So that was a parameter. Similarly, here, I am all these are equal, I am equating it with a parameter t. Now, once I equate it to parameter t, and I break it down, break all the equations, so first equation I am getting x equal to a plus t u1. 
So consider this one, equate it with D. I will get this. Y is B plus D U B. And Z is F A B plus T of F U A B. So this is the parametric form because this depends on the parameter T. Is it clear? So I write X T. This is the parameter. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, clear? yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the next one is basically writing all the parameters in a vector XYZ. So, you write it in a vector form, you are getting it. Right? So, this is the vector. So, if I write it. So what are x t? X t was a plus t u one, y t was b plus t u two, and z t was f of a b plus t a b a b. And this was what it is. Now if I write it in a vector form, that is x t, y t, and z t. What does it mean? I just write it like this. Now, if I do scalar uh, quadratoid addition, so I can break it down. I can consider the points like this, the constant terms. And I can tease the scalar. So let me first write it like this. So if I add this to vector, I will get this one, right? Quadratoid addition, nothing else. And now I can move t outside because t is a scalar this is how vector form so if you can remember the symmetric form all the other forms are basically in an output of byproduct of this outcome of this okay is it clear everyone Yes, sir, sir, I have a doubt. Yes, sir. If yes, we ex sir. expand it to let's say three var three variables or R three. Here we are using A and B, right? So can we use like uh, A comma B comma C and then F of A comma B comma C? This is a general. This is a general. So we can expand it, right? Yeah, you can expand. It. Basically, so there uh, was one question. That's why I was asking. It ah, wasn't. It can be expanded to R n. Okay. okay, so for each one, suppose x1 to xn are there. So, first n equation are what in parametric form or in uh, symmetric, maybe if you want to write. First is x1 minus a1 by u1, x2 minus a2 by u. So, n equation you will get like this, right? Yes. What about the last equation? That is depending on the functional value. So, Yes. That t will be what? That will be f of that point a one to a n by the directional derivative along that direction. Directional derivative along that along same that direction left. at that point. Yeah. That is what your parametric equation. Now once you get your parametric equation, everything is that. In the vector form, the first portion says anything and then the t portion is telling any telling us anything, like a magnitude or direction, something like this. No, no, no. It is not like that. Is not like that. so vector equation is basically giving you uh, what I should say. If you are you are separating the constant term which are coming. Uh, if I go back to my only point. only like that. Uh, only yeah. only it's just the a segregation part. of uh, constants and the derivatives. The vector. The vector. Yeah. Uh, this the vector. So this is the point. So if I draw this, what is this first first vector? This is basically this point, right? At which we are considering the tangent, this point. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. You are getting it, right? This is point A comma B. So our functional value is f of A comma B. So the vector at this point, the coordinate of this point is A comma B comma f of A B. That is what this first one is. Right? Now along the direction there is u1, u2. So here we have considered the directional derivative of it, whatever that is, that is your, this one, 
So all together the vector form is this one. And T is the parameter. This is what vector form is. Yeah. So it's it just a vector. map on the plane uh, right. for the point and the direction. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. The plane on the surface. Surface is better. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So yep. this is what tangent line is. Now, if I want to see the tangent plane, tangent plane is where all the, yeah. Tell me. Uh, how to identify given two lines are parallel? How to identify given two lines are parallel? The direction of both the line will be same. The direction of vector. Okay, the uh, the U part. The U part. Okay, sir. That will be same or the, that will not same, I should say. Uh, the ratio will be same. Right? U1, U2 and something U3, which is which is derivative in case of the direction derivative in case of tangent, right? This one. Now for other line, if you get U1 prime, U2 prime and F of U prime A B. Now when it will be same? u1 by u1 prime equal to u2 by u2 prime equal that to proportion e2. will be equal ah the ratio will be same yeah yeah okay sir understood no yeah yes sir okay uh, okay fine why you ask that no i don't remember any question on that line uh sir, there was a question in the mock but we don't need then we don't need that one what i have said there may be some other way to solve it because that was not taught anywhere what i have said there are some questions related to that in graded and uh, practice assignments ah, but that can be solved yeah, yeah. you yeah. don't need this ratio well i think those are the questions where they're asking i mean in the direction of a certain ah, so they're not explicitly right. giving you a unit vector but they're just saying in the direction of some parallel to x axis line. or yeah. parallel to y axis, parallel to x y line, yeah. right? Like this, then you know what exactly your unit vector along that. So, only that much is enough. But he was asking in general, going to lines are parallel. So, that's why I have said, okay. Uh, yeah, so what will be the equation of tangent plane now? That is the next thing, and that is basically where uh, the gradient. Uh, what is the geometrical significance of gradient that will come in the picture? So, okay, the equation of tangent plane that will be like something kx plus by plus cz equal to d, something like this, right? This is the equation of a plane in a tree. Now, what this a, what this b, what this c and b are? If we know this, then we are done. So, it is easy to see that suppose I have a, b, and f of a, b, this is the point. For the tangent plane, and this point you are considering the tangent plane. Then, if x at a b you can calculate x minus a. Then, if y at a b you can calculate y minus b. Plus, what is the next one? What should be the c then? What should be the c then? F of a b. F of a b. Huh, f of a b is this one. Then equal to zero. C. So what should I write like this? I should write like this, right? This one you are saying, right? Yeah. If this I want to write it there, then plane. Okay. Yeah. Equal to zero. But I wanted to write it like this. So what I should do? If I want to write it. In this format, but I should make the changes. It will be my, minus the equal to f of a b. Huh. So, what is the coefficient of x? This is only this one, right? Because this portion is a constant. Right? Then, if of y a b into y, then this portion will go to a constant. Right? And minus. A, Minus f of a b. Let me write it like this. Uh, so if I rearrange it, one, 
nothing special i am just rearranging the time that this comes all together so a f x a b plus so this should be b y b f y a b minus f of a right this is the so constant term. yeah if they ask the tangent in the direction of x axis or y axis or something can we take a unit vector in that direction like 100.9 exactly. that is what you have to do that is what you have to do exactly. okay so on the similar grounds if they ask a tangent parallel to a given line like it was given in the graded assignment then we did uh, take all the i mean as you said proportionate and all we did so i am getting a new idea where we can take a unit vector on the on I mean, any point on the line and can we use a is use it as a unit vector uh, but uh, you have to shift that to the point also right yeah unit vector you can choose anyway along that uh, i will take any point like 1 comma 2 if i take automatically i'll get the third coordinate right based on the right, right, line right. equation right, right, so right. that vector that 1 comma 2 suppose if it is 3 that 1 2 3 i will change it into unit vector and can i use it as a direction in which i need to find the tangent yeah yeah that is why okay. how we do it right okay. how else have you done it Mm-hmm. I, I don't I exactly have. remember, but uh, somewhere I used this uh, proportion concept. What you told me. Ah, we don't like need that. Wanted. That is how we should. Do. Maybe I assumed some arbitrary u and u two, and uh, then uh, found it using the proportion concept. Oh. But uh, actually, we can directly do it, right? Without because we can take the proportion as one. All this equal to one, say, and then we are getting okay. exactly the same. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. So this is what our tangent, whatever the tangent thing is. So this is the coefficient of x. So this is a. This is the coefficient of y. This is a. And coefficient of z is minus one. This is c. Okay. This is a b c. Correct. So this is f x a b. F Y A B and minus one. Correct? Is it clear to everyone what I have done? So I have started with the equation of the tangent plane, and I want to wanted to write it in A X plus B Y plus C Z equal to D. Some constant. These are all constant. I need what are my coefficient of X? What are what is the coefficient of Y? And what is the coefficient of Z? That is what we need. So this is what I got. Correct? Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Yeah, but but, but uh, having it as a coordinate, uh, what what? Uh, yeah, we, we, I, we I understand. So I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to show you a vector, right? What vector this is? This is nothing but the gradient vector comma one, right? This is the gradient. This part is the gradient vector, right? This f x a b and a y yes, a b. Yes. This part is our gradient vector, right? Yes. This is our gradient gradient of this, right? This is our gradient vector. Now in R, so this is in R two. Now I want it in R three. I am adding another coordinate like this. Minus one gradient vector comma minus one. So this is the new vector. Which I am creating. This one. This one is basically our coefficient for all our this a x plus b y plus c z equal to z. Right? This one. This is a b and c is minus one. That is what we have seen. Correct? So this vector is basically perpendicular to the plane. This vector is perpendicular to the plane. The gradient vector is basically. That's why I am saying the gradient vector is basically in the normal direction of the tangent plane. That is what it is. Okay. Okay. So if I draw it, uh, so let me go there again. This one. If I consider a tangent plane at at a particular point, the gradient vector will be in the perpendicular direction of that. That direction is our gradient vector. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. 
So let me see. I should have some. So uh, if I do this, this is the function I have chosen, okay, x square plus y square. So this is the surface, the blue one which you are seeing, that is the surface, okay, this one. Now uh, the point I have taken is 1 comma 1 comma 2, that is the point on the surface, this one. This is the point on the surface. Correct? Now, if I want to draw a tangent plane at that point, so this is the tangent plane, the plane you are seeing, that is the tangent plane which you are seeing that on the surface, lies on the surface. So it contains all the tangent at that point. Correct? Is this what you are doing? Yes. Okay. Bye. So now, as you have seen, this 2x is basically our uh, fx, right? Partial derivative along x axis. This 2y is partial derivative along y axis. So, these two are derivative we have considered. And eventually, we'll, we add this all and we are getting this tangent plane here. Okay. So, this is what we did. And if I draw a perpendicular at that point, that this this is the point if i draw a perpendicular at that point on this plane that will be a gradient vector okay 2x comma 2y minus 1 because we are in r3 so third point will be minus 1 that is the point okay that is the geometrical significance of gradient is it clear yes sir okay Anyone has any doubt in this? So will it always be minus one? The third vector will always be. Third vector is always minus one because that's how the tangent plane is uh, I mean, formed. That's how the tangent plane is formed. Because okay. the, what is the coefficient of z? What minus one. Minus one. Minus one. So that is the tangent plane. Now the straight line which is perpendicular to that, the direction hmm. coefficient of that should be the third coordinate will be minus one. Last two coordinates are basically the coefficient of that plane. Got it. So, Fx, Fy, minus one. That is the vector. Where Fx, Fy is. So if I consider this, Fx, Fy will be on this somewhere, on this xy plane. Yes. I'll move it to z axis, right? To get mm. a plane here, the vector here. Right. So because on uh, suppose this is our tangent plane, the normal, the perpendicular to the tangent plane is something on R3. So it has three coordinates. What will be the third coordinate of the vector? That is minus one. Just okay. the same direction we are talking about. Okay. Okay. Understood. No? Originally, our gradient vector is this. Fx, Fy. Okay. I am moving it to along z axis. Just shifting. So, I'm minus one is. Sir, also in uh, R2, when we say slope of a tangent line, it is the inclination with respect to x axis, right? So uh, here, slope of the tangent plane means is it with respect to xy plane? No, here slope is something. Here slope is a vector actually. Okay. Here slope is a vector, not a uh, not. Does it vector. have any connection with the xy plane? This gradient Both vector. together. Ah, that is why. That is why. That is why these are coming. Along x direction, this is the slope. Only along x direction, the fx. Okay. Along y direction, the okay, slope yes. is fy. And those the same slope concepts getting split into ah, two. Two part, x axis and y axis. Exactly. And that is why the gradient vector comma one that is giving the normal perpendicular. Because if you take the dot product with any vector on the plane, that will become zero. Understood? That's how the that is formed, right? 
सर इज इट लाइक वी आर फर्स्ट फाइंडिंग अ परपेंडिकुलर वेक्टर ऑन अ दिस सरफेस एट अ पॉइंट एंड देन वी आर चूजिंग अ वेक्टर ऑन दिस सरफेस एंड वी आर फाइंडिंग द डॉट प्रोडक्ट इक्वल टू जीरो एंड दैट्स हाउ वी आर गेटिंग द इक्वेशन ऑफ द टेंजेंट ओके इज इट क्लियर सर कैन यू द द लास्ट पॉइंट व्हाट इज नाउ कैन यू कैन यू जस्ट सो व्हाट ही इज सेइंग बेसिकली ही इज समराइजिंग व्हाट आई हैव सेड या या कैन यू समर ओके सो व्हाट वी आर डूइंग वी आर वी आर गेटिंग दिस गेडियन वेक्टर राइट दिस इज आवर गेडियन वेक्टर नाउ द पॉइंट इज एट दिस पॉइंट a comma b इफ आई कंसीडर दिस वेक्टर a b a y a b एंड माइनस 1 this is the direction which is perpendicular to the surface at, a, at this particular point right so yes. take all the points which are perpendicular to this that will be our tangent plane if i say it conversely if i consider this vector and consider all those vectors which are perpendicular to this take all the points so take u so the dot product is zero take all such u that is basically all the points on the tangent plane and that's how the uh, equation of plane is formed that is what he has said he has said just converse my statement i was saying first consider the tangent plane then perpendicular is basically the gradient vector comma one now what he is saying he basically reinterpreting my statement he is saying consider the gradient vector comma minus one and take all the points which are perpendicular to that that is your tangent understood yeah yeah, yeah. that is that is what the secret Okay, is it clear? So till now, what we have done is clear to everyone. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Great. So this is done. More or less. Critical points. The next thing is critical point, which is basically the extended to week eleven also. So again, critical points. We have again this. We have done in uh, mass one course. But what we have done in mass one course, we have done just suppose we have f x. We have calculated f dash x where it is zero. So f dash x is what? F dash x is where the tangent line is parallel to x axis, right? Yes, sir. All yes, those points where tangent line is parallel to x axis that is given by the equation f dash x is zero. So here, what should be the analogous concept of that? What should be the analogous concept of that? Gradient is equal to zero. Ah, why is that? Because tangent plane needs to be parallel, right? Tangent plane needs to be parallel. So we need gradient to be zero. That is, if x, the coefficient of x in the tangent plane. that should be zero this is the first equation and this is the second equation all those x y we satisfy these two equations simultaneously that is my critical point correct and how many classes are there maxima maxima minima and saddle minima saddle and saddle Now, for finding this maximum, minimum saddle point, we have some uh, parameters, right? How we should check? There is something called Hessian matrix. Because you remember when in one variable thing, we have to go to f double dash x because we need to know how the slope is changing, whether it is coming from positive to negative or negative to positive, right? That will give us whether it is maximum or minimum. Similarly, here also we have to go to the second order partial derivative to find whether I am getting a maxima or minima, right? This is clear. And for that, there are yes, various things which uh, you again you can see there are a list of that. Uh, so we can see if I open it. So we calculate the second order partial derivative. 
anyone has any doubt in calculating second order partial derivative no sir this is no, same sir. as we have done for first order right uh, so put the second variable constant and then take the derivative with respect to the other derivative other variable sir so when to the use the general rule means whatever the definition is by using uh, definition when we can uh, use means what case we have so to use that using uh, so generally what i have said uh, so for pointing a type of function you don't have to bother about it you use okay. general thing okay but if there is a piecewise function something is defined or there is a mod function mod function is also a piecewise defined function, yes right? so i have given one example uh, earlier in one of my live session that was like this remember those who have attended that session Ah oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Minus so, would be one, and plus would be one. You gave this exactly. example. Exactly. So this looks like a polynomial, but this is not actually a polynomial, right? Because for these are two mod, mod function. Exactly. This is when x is greater than or equal to zero, and this is when x is less than zero. So this is actually a piecewise function. Right. Now, if I okay. want to calculate f x. Now you need to check whether f x exists or not at zero comma zero. Now you need to check it. So you should go by definition. You cannot directly just uh, calculate this is x. So y is constant. F x is one. That is not true here because you need to go by a uh, definition. Definition. So this was the definition, right? Mm. So what is f h comma zero? So there are two parts which are coming. When h is positive, h is coming from a positive side, then it is the first one, correct? Hmm. Because mod is there, so h is coming from the positive side, then it is h one plus zero, so h by h, so it is one, right? So how we second. got that means h of zero comma okay, so h of zero, so h zero. It okay, is the first okay. One. Yes. Well, zero comma zero is zero, right? Uh -huh. So this is uh, now when coming from the left side, what is f of h comma zero? Then we should take the second one. Mm -hmm. So minus h by h. So it is minus, minus one. one. So these two limits are different. Correct? So this yes. limit does not exist. So, so no need to exist. check. Sure, 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 sure. So yeah. To help you understand how did you got h comma zero as this is, this is definition of uh, fx, no? What was the definition of fx? A plus x. Ha. Huh. fx of a b. Yeah. This limit x tends to zero. F of a plus h one comma b plus h two. No, no, not b plus h. Just fx. I am saying, no. I say only fx. Okay, with respect to us. Okay. A plus so, so this is the definition, right? Yeah. Now, if A and B both are zero, so what that is? Okay. Right? This is what we get. That is what I have written. Yeah? Yeah. Now, H, when H is positive, H is coming from the positive side of X axis. Then we have to check the first one. Right? Because this is X greater than equal to zero. That's why H by H is coming. When h is coming from the negative side, I am getting minus h. So minus h by h that is minus one. So these okay. two are different. So limit does not exist. So it is okay. Is it clear? Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for this type of situation, you need to go via definition. You cannot directly calculate it. Okay. Understood? Yes. Yes. Sir. yes sir. <laughs> okay. Uh, fine. So this is there now. What else? Ah, so similarly, the for second order partial derivative, we can calculate f double dash double x or f x y or f y x or this. Now, when f y x and f f x y are equal, there is this Clairaut theorem which is coming in the picture. Clairaut theorem is saying if all these partial derivative are uh, defined and continuous along the in the neighborhood of that particular point. That is happened. So most of the cases it happens like that. Right? If we are considering in polynomial type of function or generally when fx fi exists, 
in most of the cases it is continuous around that particular point okay so when we are talking about critical points and all this this is anyway satisfied because for critical point the uh, we can check the hessian matrix if this happens otherwise we cannot check right so if you see the condition for critical points which is written below here this one if you see so what is the condition uh, should i zoom it little more yes sir uh, so sometimes this asian matrix uh, fails right so in that case even if it the was just on the asian matrix fail Ah, yeah. Zero, right? Yeah. So in that case, if the question is uh, asked like, uh, what's the property of that critical point? Then we should uh, write according to the Hessian matrix only. Or I did not ask you. Get your question. What? What? Sorry. Uh, what is the question? Mm, like there were some examples in the uh, video lecture. Uh, where Hessian matrix was failing, but really we know that it's a global minima at some critical point. So uh, whether we should uh, write according to our knowledge or we should uh, follow so the Hessian, Hessian matrix is failing. That oh. means the that is inconclusive. You should write that one. Inconclusive. Ah, okay. Maybe cannot, determinant will be there. Okay. We cannot conclude anything. Sir, just just one follow up question. According to that, I mean, to that related to that topic. Let's say we have a we have a polynomial function x raised to four plus y raised to four. I mean, f of x comma y. Hmm. So in that case, at zero zero, we know that Hessian matrix would fail. But the critical point zero zero is a global minima. We can conclude that, right? Even if ha -ha, because Hessian that has... function, yeah, that is special type of function. Because ah, so sir, for yeah, that okay. function, always is positive, right? Uh, yeah, ah, I ah, was ah, ah, ah. Oh, asking the same actually. So yeah. we should uh, write according to the Hessian matrix, or uh, uh, we should write that. No, no. For that case, you should write what you know. Okay, global minima. We can write global like. Global. So, sir, in such cases, I mean, sir, for in such special cases, we have to use the definition of the uh, function. I mean, the the definition, right? Like, uh, if x, y both are increasing, then it's greater than zero or something like that, is it? Ah, ah, right, right. Basically, okay. it is only on these type of cases what you have said. No other cases. Ha ha ha. I mean, sir. I mean, I mean that. I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to get a, you know, like a single line thing over there. So that depends on the cases. I mean, the, that is one thing. I mean, we cannot generalize all these type of situation because these are special cases for which we can do. Right. So this is there is no general thumb rule for this. In general, this. Uh, so what here we are saying that if we want to check uh, the classify classification of the critical point using Hessian matrix, then in that case the test is inconclusive. But that does not mean that that critical point is nothing. Right? That critical point is neither minimum nor maximum nor certain point. That is not the case. We cannot conclude from this test. Correct. But it is actually something. It is either minimum or maximum or several point. It is something because it is a critical point. But we cannot conclude anything from this test. But maybe we can, by seeing the graph we can conclude it, or maybe some other way. Maybe it is given that it is minimum at that point. So these are the separate cases. The point is for Hessian test that is inconclusive. Uh, uh, sir, yeah. this Hessian test. Um... Yeah. All those criterions will be provided, uh, or we should remember. Means uh, this is, uh, say, for example, double no, 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 this, derivative this is, is greater than zero, and then uh, this like this, uh, those those uh, actual this tests. Remember. This we should remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, this is the. Uh, I mean, not, nothing very difficult. Okay. If uh, the determinant is greater than zero, then either it is maximum or minima. If it is less than zero, then it is saddle point. No, and no, it's all, the, 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 that's very clear. But uh, ah. whether that will be given in the question paper no, uh, no, for no, us no. to follow, or should we remember? This is the... you should remember this. This is 
Thank you. Sir, how to check this global min minimum and maximum? Rates? So you calculate all the, suppose for some function, you calculate all the maximum and minimum, right? Hmm. Or saddle for all you have calculated. Hmm. Now, suppose there are only five critical points. For two critical point, you are getting minimum. For two critical point, you are getting maximum. For one, you are getting saddle point. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Now, two maxima, right? Mm. Among those two, which one is greater? That is the global maxima, right? Because that's what the function is just maximum. Okay. That is what maxima does, right? Mm. Yes, it's the maximum so, value. Uh, maximum is, uh, so by doing Hessian matrix, we are checking local. Critically, critical points, we are checking local. Right? Now, among yes. all this local, which is the maximum, that is the global thing. Okay. Right? That is what. Yes, yes. Which gives the maximum function value. Exactly. Correct, sir. Exactly. Yeah, like, exactly. like as as we got the, got in the definition, right? Exactly. Yeah, but if there is an exponential function, then uh, then it is always in, it is in there. Yeah, it's infinite, right? So there won't. So will the will the domain? I mean, uh, will the uh, uh, the domain always be given? Yeah, domain always will be given. Okay, and the range also for. In case yeah, we have you to... can check. No, if domain is given, then range is up to you. You can calculate it. If domain is given, then you no, can no. calculate the range. Right? Yeah, if the domain is bound, it's fine. But if it's infinite domain, like let's say R3, then, then it then global maxima is a then we will ask something where global maxima exists. Okay. Otherwise, it cannot what it can. Right? Suppose yeah, I mean, I like for, for example, something like sin x, huh. right? Right. Huh. I mean, you know, it's one. Right. Exactly. Even for uh, R a, suppose for R two to R a function, I am giving you e power x plus y, and I am asking, does global maxima exist? What function what is x, 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 x plus y? E power x plus y, exponential x plus y. Uh, maxima or does it minima? Yes. Right? Uh, no. Exactly. That, that is the point. So yeah. if I am giving you this function and up to two R, and I am asking, does global maxima exist? No. Okay. The answer is no. Would approach to infinity, so maxima we cannot conclude. Exactly. That is that is what I am saying. Whereas minima exists, so that it we can. Is, uh, is what, what is. So, if you want to uh, summarize this, that where the global maxima happens or where the global minima happens, like what is the bottom line which we can conclude it with? So, first of all, there are some local maxima, local minima, right? You know that. Now, where among those local maxima, which one is the maximum? That is basically a global maxima, unless the function is increasing after that after some particular point, right? Then the global maximum will be infinite. That is beyond our case. Mm -hmm. Yes, if it is in bounded something, then global maximum or global minimum always exists. For that case, you have to check for the boundary generally, or all the local maxima you have to take and take the maximum around that. Which one uh, among these two are maximum? That is, is your global maximum. Is it here? Yeah. Yes, sir. So I, am, I am saying this is same like one same thing like one variable. This is the same definition. Suppose a bounded domain is given. So you can check the functional value at the boundary points. Okay. All these boundary points, you can check that. And you also have some local maxima. Suppose these are the local maxima. Among these, all the boundary points and these three local maxima. Whatever the maximum value function is achieving. That is your global maximum. Correct? Is it clear? And similarly for the minimum value. Check for all the boundary points wherever the minimum value is occurring. And you have some local minima. Among those minima, whatever the minimum value function is getting, that is your local minima. Okay? Like the lowest among the all and all. maximum, yeah. like the maximum among the all yeah 
but now in, in the case of uh, sorry in the case can of I say, can i say one thing sure 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 yeah so the point is we have not discussed this in with 11 actually this boundary point and all this we are just focusing on local maximum and local minima if you can see the lectures and in exam also we'll ask only for that okay got it got it then that is the bottom line i think <laughs> yeah but <laughs> as you are asking i am saying that this is what actually the process is right? I, so i just have one question i understand what you just said in that local maximum yeah. near scope yeah. but if i take this function fx e raised to x plus y yeah. if the domain is actually bounded if someone says it's not r square or domain uh, there's a bound for x and y yeah. then you get a global then we get a global map. Okay. Okay. Suppose I give you this function in the domain a circle. Okay. Correct. X plus y equal to 1. Yes. Then you know what you do. Right? Yeah. So this is what it is. So don't really get fearful for all this. Uh, sir, uh, is, there an, uh, is there an easy way to remember or this? Uh, remember what? This there are some test conditions, right? This condition, no. Yeah, is there any way? Uh, I mean, easy. I mean, uh, what actually we are doing? The Hessian matrix. What we are doing? So if I write it down, this is our Hessian matrix. Sorry. This is y x and this is y. Right? This is our Hessian matrix. The determinant of that. So we are generally doing this one minus an fxy and fyx are equal. So I was starting from there that this is actually square. Why is that? Because this is the condition. It's first and second order partial derivative are continuous and in an open ball around AB. That is the exact condition for Clairaut theorem. Right? All the partial derivatives are continuous. That was the condition for Clairaut theorem also. So when this is happening, the second order mixed derivative will be equal. That means if x y and f y x are actually equal, correct? Yeah. Okay. So this these two are equal. So this is giving me a square. So this is a positive term, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I only have to bother about this one, these two basically. So first of all, two things we need. That is, this thing is greater than or equal to zero. That we need. For critical part, whether it, whether it will be maximum or minimum. If it is less than equal to zero, less than zero, not equal. If it is less than zero, then it is saddle point. That is one separate case. If it is less than zero, that is saddle point. If it yeah. is greater than zero, that is maximum or minimum. Greater than this zero, we have to look the uh, look at the first. Uh, uh, if it is greater than zero, then only we have to go to this, right? Okay. Whether the first one is greater than zero or less than zero. That is why we are doing. Is it clear? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So this is how we generally check for uh, critical points and whether it is maximum or minimum. Okay, is it clear? Yes, sir. This is nothing but uh, just uh, taking a particular. So, see this type of problem. Suppose some functions are given, and then you have to take whether what are the critical points you have to solve it, and then uh, for each particular point, you have to check the condition. Nothing else. Right? This is what critical points are. And the last thing is basically differentiability of scalar valued multivariate function. So this again, this is uh, what we have done in case of uh, directional derivative more or less, but this is generalization of that. This is not any particular direction. This is in general. Someone was asking when I was uh, talking about directional derivative that this looks similar, but this is not actually similar. This is yes, sir, I when, was asking. yeah, so this is when a function is differentiable or not at a particular point, no direction is given. Right? At a particular point, it is differentiable or not. So it should be differentiable in all the direction, whatever the direction it is. Then we call it is differentiable, right? That is in our general sense tells us. So basically, we are 
taking a particular point and we are considering all the points around it, all the neighborhood of it. And we are calculating this uh, inclination. So in one of Sir, if you have I, time, uh, yeah, if you have time, can you solve the option three? Uh, so that is I what I am saying. Can you question. just go back to my week 11 live session and see this? Because okay. I have explained okay. it, I have drawn a picture and I explained it there completely. So it will take half an hour maybe for that live session. Can you just go back and check it? That will be enough for you. Sure, sure, sure. sure. Week week eleven uh, week which eleven was live session live session, live session. Yeah. okay so I can like, like for a hint if uh, for a hint for example uh, uh, Thursday thirteenth uh, when it was conducted yes yes 13th. I am showing you that. Sir, if I'm not wrong, Thursday 13th one, uh, the link was not available in the calendar. Now it is available. Now it is available. Now it is this one, right? This one. So if I... So... In this document, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is this diagram I was talking about. Okay. Actually, this, this is more than half an hour discussion. Ah, actually, it is. But actually, what is what it is? So I have point A comma B. You can see the cursor here, right? In this direction, I am drawing. So I am drawing as. Uh, and sir, uh, can you please zoom a little bit? Can you just just one one? Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So I am drawing a rectangle. And what is the neighborhood here? Neighborhood of that. So basically, along x-axis, I am taking h inclination as h. Along y-axis, I am taking inclination of k. So my point I am getting here is a plus h comma b, right? Because along x-axis, I am taking inclination h and on y axis i am taking inclination k so i am getting the point a comma b plus k so where these two point meet if i complete this parallelogram or rectangle parallelogram i should say uh, or rectangle i should say because of these are all 90 degree so this is the point i am getting a plus h comma b plus k correct and what is the length of this diagonal this is root over h square plus k square correct so from a comma b to this point a plus h comma b plus k i am getting the separation i am getting the distance is nothing but root over h square plus k square right that is the norm of h comma k correct till this question is it clear yes sir. okay great now if i go take all the points the functional value of those points and take it point it on the surface so you know where f of a comma b is this is the point a comma f of a comma b this is the point f of a plus h comma b and similarly if we complete the rectangle i am getting the point f of a comma h comma b plus k now what is the uh, change of these two change with difference between these two this is f of a plus h comma b plus k minus f of a a comma b right now what is the difference between this along x axis what is the difference this is f of a plus h comma b minus f of a b this one correct this is along the x axis this change now if i divide it by h that is basically our h into fx right that was our fx that's how we are defining fx clear is this part clear to everyone yes sir now yes sir. what is similarly what is fy fy is basically change in this direction f of a comma b plus k minus f of a b by k that was our f y so i have moved k to the other side so this is what this difference is k into f of y the partial derivative with respect to y right now if we put all this together this formula yeah. so this is the difference of the function and this is along x axis along y axis this two i am deducting and I am taking this norm. I am dividing with this norm. If this whole limit is going to zero, that is along the neighborhood, the function 
the change of the function is not so haphazard it is kind of smooth that is the limit is going to zero that is not so much change is happening along the uh, in the neighborhood of the point a comma b then we say that it is differential is it clear how this formula has come and this is the formula of differentiation this is the formula you have to check whether the function is differentiable so now you know from where from which picture it is coming this is what is it clear more or less the geometrical representation yes okay yes sir so this is what uh, your this is so a plus h vector so this is for n variable i have done for two variables so a plus h vector that means a1 a plus h b plus k c plus something k prime all these are coming this is the j minus f of that particular point minus h dot gradient of f that is what i was getting h into fx k into fy and i am putting all this together minus h into this minus k into this so if i take minus common i will get h into fx plus k into fy that is h comma k dot our gradient vector that h comma k is basically h h d and then norm of h so norm of h in our case was norm of h comma k that is root over h plus k square <coughs> is it clear so this is uh, so i uh, it will be better if you just go back and take a look in this document again so using actually using this function if you can if you just do it for one single variable function then it will go back to the basic limit right i mean basic yeah uh, it will go back to the basic right? yeah, basic it is actually coming to single variable only h yeah correct correct right uh, but the single variable as a vector so h is not h here h is h comma k right yeah yeah okay in different directions yeah Uh, it is actually h comma k as a vector. It is singular, single vector, but it is not actually a single vector. It is h comma k. In the other case, it is maybe that is h n h i n. H i n. So all this will come. So it is a multivariable limit. Even here, not a single. Vector. Okay. But in some cases, it can uh, reduce to a single variable. Well, then it can change. Otherwise, you know how to check for the limit of starting. Okay, is it clear or unless what our intention is? Anyone has any doubt? Whatever we have discussed today, we can solve one question on this multivariable differentiable differentiability. Yes. Why don't you try? You want me to solve? So okay. I have one question uh, regarding the deduction and derivative. So okay, so let me solve one this as you are. So nothing. I mean, this is quite simple. So this function at zero zero, if I want to check whether it is differentiable or not. Okay. What things we need? We need f x and f y. Right. So at zero comma zero, zero plus h, zero plus k, zero zero minus h comma k dot gradient vector. That is two x and two y. And so this is f x zero. <coughs> so this is actually zero and zero. This is the norm. This is the limit I have to calculate. Anyone has any doubt till this point? No. This is the definition of the formula. So what is f of h comma k? This is h square plus k square. F of zero comma zero is zero. This is also zero. Root h square plus k square. So, sir, it's getting zero in the limit. 
so this is over x square plus k square so eventually it is zero so our limit is zero that means this function is differentiable at all yeah this is what it was saying it should be zero if some other limits come, limit exists, but limit is supposed to say 2 or 1, then we say that it is not effective. Right? Yeah, limit exists or not, that is not that is not in priority. Yeah, priority is the limit should be 0. That means the change, what we have calculated with this formula, if you remember. So this is basically, we are seeing what is the change of the function around that point, what is happening in this uh, rectangle. Right? How far the function is changing? So now, we just as, I just uh, wanted to uh, discuss this problem. Just uh, uh, requested a problem uh, because I just want to understand the difference between this and the way we do uh, uh, the the way we solve the continuity and the limits. Right? What is the basic difference? Uh, that is, uh, this is a better uh, way of solving that. Right. But better way. I mean, this is completely different thing. Limit is basically what uh, where the function is approaching if I am approaching to a particular point. Continuity is whether there is any gap or change or jump in particular point. Differentiability is basically checking. So this is basically checking how the function or value is changing around that point. These three are completely different concepts. Got it? For, for, for continuity, we are we are trying to check the different uh, different we are doing the uh, differentiation only yeah? around the point. Uh, no, no, no. Why? Why? No, no. Continuity just limit exists and the limiting value is same at the particular point. Same at the f of a. That is what continuity is. We did not do differentiation. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah. This one you are seeing what is the change around that? That one it is just exactly. Approaching. Exactly. Approaching to that point, what ah. is the value? Ah. The From change should be zero. I mean, change should be minimum. That is what. Okay. No such change. Is that is what. Okay. So, the, so that but, is, but it, but in, is in, in, change is in, smooth. Now sudden abrupt change is not happening. Yeah. Tell me. So, so in general, if it is differentiable, it is continuous. That's a given, right? Ah, okay. That that needs proof, which we did not include. In oh, sorry, that needs proof, but that's a. That's in one is, variable you have seen. Yes, in one variable you have seen it. Uh, multi variable we have seen. This is, uh, no, no, but is is that statement uh, applicable for multi variable or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If they are going to ask uh, to check the continuity instead of limits, we can go and check the this. Uh, Way and then uh, say that why? this is continuous or not. Why you do that? Continuous checking is much easier. Why you yeah, yeah. go to this? this Even is in that like... case, we cannot. No, no. If this uh, approach fails, if it is not differentiable, we cannot say that it is not continuous. Ah, right. Right. There are chances that it may be continuous but not differentiable. Uh, not differentiable. Like mod x. In one variable, if you check that for the mod x. Yeah, mod x. Mod x is continuous at origin, but it is not different. Yeah, so, so checking differentiability will not give any idea of continuity. If it so is yeah, positive, so it's, it, it's yeah, a one way, one way street, right? So yeah. if it is differentiable, yes. it is continuous. But being, it doesn't mean that it's not exactly. the other way around. Yes. Okay. So we have any application for this uh, check differentiability for multivariate? For now, no. For this last two days, for example. And no, just for 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 this uh, paper. For this paper, no application. Okay. Right. But there are many applications actually in the real world. But for this paper, for now, I will say. So uh, again, what, you will get confused with all this. So don't don't bother. So one question I had: so everything that we have learned in maths one, two, stats one, stats two, everything, we have never touched complex numbers. Any reason for that? I mean, is it Basically, not required in ML and other stuff? Yeah, exactly. That is the point. Okay. So, and uh, one thing is, if you know the real uh, this vector space concept, R two and R three, 
complex number we can see it as a representation in r2 the argon plane so we can take a copy of that in r2 so and my so question was more around appli application because i know in engineering you do need i mean complex numbers uh -huh. at all but in uh, machine learning and all i wasn't sure at the beginning machine learning i think there is a one one week okay uh, yes sir uh, one week is uh, for uh, complex yes okay so i have one question uh, regarding directional derivative so actually uh, instead of giving a direction a particular direction if it says that Uh, the direction is towards 45 degree to x axis or some degree to x axis it will not be given actually in in the video lecture 9.3 i think uh, the professor uh, sorry sir can you please yeah you tell me what you complete your question yeah 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 so instead of giving a direction a particular point if uh, they give that uh, the direction is towards let's say 45 degree of x axis right then how to uh, solve how to get the direction ah, so what is 45 degree to x axis x y do you know any particular line along that direction uh, y equal to x i think exactly and now For along y equal to x, what the unit vector can I take? Uh, one one. Is it unit vector? Uh, okay, uh, one by root two, comma one. One by root two. Uh, that is the reason. Okay, so uh, for forty five degree it is fine, but for any other degree then how to? Uh, so only those degree will give will be given for which you know the scale. Otherwise, you know what is tan theta, right? So even I, I give you in general, suppose some theta is given on x-axis with x-axis, right? So you know what your aim is. Aim is your tan theta. Okay, okay, yes, yes. Oh, y equal to uh, m x kind of. So you can okay. calculate it okay, by okay. calculating. Uh -huh. Yes, 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 right. right. Okay. I have question, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, if we are getting gradient as a uh, zero vector, then uh, gradient will be discontinuous, right, sir? Why? If you are getting gradient sir, as a zero vector, yes, no. No, sir, I mean, I have a doubt in that. No, no, why it will be zero? What is continuous? I mean, zero is also a function. It is continuous function, right? Okay, sir. And uh, when we get gradient as a zero, then uh, are you saying that gradient vector along at all the points are zero? Is it what you are saying? Yes, yes. Gradient is a uh, actually uh, zero vector coming as a zero vector for all the points. Uh, for all the points. Ah, then it is a continuous function, no? Because it is a constant function, zero. And the uh, constant function uh, is continuous, right? Ah, uh, yes, sir. And uh, if gradient is zero vector, then uh, we cannot find the directional derivatives, right, sir? What? Again, say it again. If gradient is uh, coming as a zero vector, then uh, uh -huh. we cannot find the directional derivative. Is it right? No, you can find. No, sir. Each each directional derivative will come as a zero vector again. Ah, so the directional derivative will be zero. So what is the issue? It can happen. So, so we can say that the directional derivative does not exist. No, it is zero. It is zero, but exists. Ah. Okay, sir. So why you are saying that zero means that's not like zero? Zero is a zero is a number, right? It exists. Why you are saying it does not exist? No, sir. I just solved the activity questions of nine point six. So okay. there are uh, uh, two three questions are like that, sir. Okay. 
whatever we have done in this live session or uh, this uh, solve with us assignment just take a look at solve with us assignment part of here that will be enough i think so have you all solved the mock yes sir yes sir They are still two days before the exam. You can revise once or just okay. Hope it will be good. Thank you so very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And all the best. All of thank you. All the best. All the very best. Thank you, sir.